Hi folks, welcome to Bold Grace Bible Institute. Um, today we are looking at the application of the principles of hermeneutics to the Bible. My name is Frank Kuba, and uh, I am Cyprian. So Cyprian, you know, uh, I haven't looked at some of the principles with mm. respect to the hermeneutics. Yeah. Today, I want us to look at how to apply the hermeneutics, the principles of hermeneutics to the Bible, to the mm. text. Mm. But there's an observation that I've made. Mm. Uh, almost every believer that I have spoken to, if I, you know, ask them to continue with the text as Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, okay. seek ye the kingdom of God first and, and its righteousness. And all these things shall be given unto you. They normally talk about all other things shall be given unto you. Okay. So, personally, I don't know what is causing that. Secondly, how do we use the principles of hermeneutics to interpret this scripture accurately? Yeah, thank you, Frank. Um, you know, the last time I told you about the fact that you cannot get your interpretation correct if you decide not to follow principles that govern communication or hermeneutic principles okay now matthew 6 33 is not only the person that you ask that you know uh gets matthew 6 33 wrong but almost every believer okay. i mean you live in this country yeah and you can go to every university yeah. i did i did this i asked so many people i mean the same question when i was in university okay. and they got it wrong oh okay you can go to various universities go to various homes ask parents mm -hmm. who are believers you can go to uh many business centers mm -hmm. many workplaces ask those who are christian that please continue this statement for me. Seek the kingdom of God first and its righteousness. And almost everybody you you, you ask will say, Oh, this is simple. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, and all, all other things, things shall be added yeah. unto you. Meanwhile, the scripture is not saying all oh, uh, other things. Like you said, what is causing what, what that? What is causing that? Yeah. What is causing that is lack of biblical hermeneutic strain okay if we don't train ourselves on how to interpret the bible mm -hmm. we will misinterpret the scriptures not because it is deliberate mm -hmm. i want to emphasize on that okay you will misinterpret the bible not because it is deliberate but because you don't know how to interpret it. it okay and because you don't even know that there is a way in which the bible has to be interpreted so even if, even if you are wrong in the interpretation, you will not be able to detect it? No, you won't be able to detect it. You are very sincere. You speak with passion. You shout, you scream. And you think that this is what the text is saying. Okay. Because you were, you were born into it. Parents will tell you, seek the kingdom of God first. And every other thing. Okay. Uh, you go to school. Is, yeah. Your teacher will say the same thing. Yeah. You go to church. You hear the same thing. You turn on your radio, your TV. You hear the same thing. So it becomes part of your life yeah. is so it becomes part of our culture and so you think that, that is the that is the exact thing you, yes you are so not supposed to exactly so distortion has become part of our culture now mm. so we we are misinterpreting a text without knowing that this is not what god is saying and the only way you can save yourself from this error is when you start learning biblical hermeneutics okay that is the only way that you can what uh uh uh, you know, save yourself from misinterpreting uh, the text six Matthew six thirty three. Okay. Because if we decide right now to apply the principles, mm -hmm. okay, for us to see what Jesus meant by seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, okay, mm -hmm. and what you say all other things, you will notice that Jesus wasn't saying all other things. Okay. You get it yeah so what i want us to do here is to apply the principles to 
the hermetic principle yeah. to Matthew 63. Yeah, that is what for I mean. viewers to mm -hmm. see things for themselves. Okay. Now we have said that the principles are grammatical principles, mm -hmm. cultural principles, uh, Context, do you have contextual, okay. uh, literal. Okay. Now we the passage that we have historical uh, principle is not much needed here. Okay. And um, cultural principle is also not much needed. needed here. Okay. Principles that are needed here are that's why I told you about arts. Okay. So here you see principles that you need to apply here. Okay. So here we are going to apply contextual principle, mm -hmm. literal or normal principles okay. of following language rules. Okay. And then uh, grammatical principles. Okay, so Cyprian, how would you know that this mm -hmm. is the kind of principle I have to apply? Is it a text that will indicate it to you? Yes, the okay. text will indicate it. Okay. Do you get it? Okay. If you go to a text where uh, it is talking about a particular way of life, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and that way of life is different from your way your of life, life. Okay. As, as, as a reader of okay. the Bible now, okay. then you should know that the, the way of life stated here is quite different from my way of life. So what did it mean? This is where the, the culture, culture or the, his, okay. the, the historical Can aspects okay. you know, come in. Okay. You get it. Okay. So since we don't have much of the lifestyle mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. here and uh, culture and history, we don't need that here. Okay. So what we need here is to look at the context okay. and then we look at the uh, grammar okay. and then we look at uh, the literal aspect. Okay. So if Jesus is saying seek the kingdom of God, now let me read Matthew 6 33. All right. It says that, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Okay. And all these things okay. will be added to you. Okay. So if you follow this grammatically, okay. you notice that the last phrase, the last sentence says mm -hmm. that, the last sentence of Matthew 6 33 okay. says that. All these things, yeah, and in our normal communication, mm -hmm. if you tell somebody, Bring me this book, okay, we are emphasizing something specific, exactly. When you tell somebody, These guys, yeah, you are what dealing with what specific, specific what persons, Person, yeah. So, the same approach must be uh, used when. Okay. Uh, interpreting the Bible. So here the text is saying all these things. So the these here is, is in reference to something, right? Yes, it's, it's demonstrative pronoun. Okay. Okay. Right. So it is referring to uh, uh, some things. So simply, I don't cut you mm. uh, short or I don't cut you up. That means that this, all these, mm. Jesus Christ had in mind mm. as he is a speaker, mm -hmm. he had in mind in reference to the D. A D C C he had in mind what he's talking about, mm -hmm. right? So it means that in applying the hermeneutics, we are going to it is, it is going to help us to discover what Jesus Christ meant by all this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So the the this here mm -hmm. is referring to certain things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the things that the this here are are referring to we cannot know it unless we go to context okay do you get it okay unless we go to context so does it mean we have to read further or we have to yes we have to read further to to be able to determine mm -hmm. what uh, the this here is referring to okay so normally what i i know of is that in the normal i was speaking mm -hmm. english you realize that if somebody says this, this, mm. bring, bring me this. Mm -hmm. That means the person has already spoken about that particular thing to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you already have in mind mm -hmm. what the this is referring to, right? Exactly. So it means that if we are applying similar principle, mm. then it means that we have to come to the test. Mm. And then Jesus Christ might have mentioned the items already, mm. and that is why he's not repeating the items, yeah. but he's using the pronoun these to refer to them, right? Exactly. Okay. He's using the pronoun these to refer it, to refer to those things. Okay. So if you go to context, okay, which is one of the principles, mm -hmm. and 
context, we say that what was being spoken before, okay. what was a person saying before that statement. Okay. Like uh, a police officer mm -hmm. will try to do an investigation mm -hmm. and then they try to understand what happened before maybe the crime. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you are trying to put the pieces together to know why the person said what he said. Uh -huh. And that is why the where contest comes in. So okay. we are looking at contest and we are we will go uh to s some of the passages or verses that come before verse 30, 33. Okay. So when you go to verse 25, mm -hmm. you notice that Jesus is beginning a new thought. Mm -hmm. Now we have verse 25 saying that for this reason I say to you do not be worried about your life mm -hmm. as to what you eat mm -hmm. or what you will drink nor for your body mm -hmm. as to what you put on is not life more than food mm -hmm. and the body more than clothing mm -hmm. okay look at so now we have some things that mm -hmm. have been mentioned here okay we have food mm -hmm. And then we have clothing. clothing. Now let's continue. If you look at verse 26, it says that look at the base of the air mm -hmm. that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather in bands, mm -hmm. and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Yeah. Okay. So you see a repetition of the items. Yeah. First he said food mm -hmm. and then clothing. clothing. And now he's saying that. Your heavenly father what feeds them. Feed them. That is Emphasis food. again on food. Are you not wealth more than they? Okay. 27. And who of you by being worried can add a single hour to his life? Okay. 28. And why are you worried about clothing? Okay. So clothing has also been repeated. Clothing has been repeated. Observe how the lilies of the field grow. Mm -hmm. They do not toil nor do they spend 29 yet i say to you not even solomon in all his glory clothed okay so himself like one of these okay 30 but if god so clothes the grass of the field mm -hmm. which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the fence mm -hmm. will he not much more clothe you so clothes has been mentioned four times. Four times. You of little faith. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat? Mm -hmm. What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Mm -hmm. Or what will we wear right. for clothing? So food, water, and clothing. Good. 32. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. Okay, so the, this is in reference to what he mentioned earlier. Food. Food, water, and clothing. Clothing. This. So, I don't catch it, but so you could have said, for the Gentiles seek water, food, and then clothing. Exactly. And instead of mentioning that he just made use, made use of the this. And this is this is normal way of communicating. Yeah, yeah. We all use it today. Yeah, it's true. So now, he comes to verse 33 saying, but seek first his kingdom mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you okay so you notice that jesus is emphasizing on food clothing mm -hmm. and what basic yeah. necessities of life he is not promising his mm -hmm. disciples mm -hmm. at this point peter uh bartholomew Thomas, Thomas and Cole. John. Yeah. He's not saying that, guys, seek the kingdom of God first. And whatever you want, you life, want in Jerusalem, you are going to have it. This is not what Jesus, you know, was saying. Jesus okay. was talking about basic necessities of life, something that you need to have to be able to live as a human being in order to accomplish God's plan and purpose. Okay. If, if you are going to be able to accomplish God's plan and purpose for your life, you must be, you must be alive. Yeah, and these things are needed to be alive. Yes, and you can't be alive if you are not eating. Yeah. You can't be alive if you are not mm -hmm. drinking water. You get it? Yeah. And you need your clothing to protect your body. Yeah. These are basic okay. things. Okay. You get it? Yeah. So, 
Jesus was saying that God has a plan for your life, mm -hmm. and He will give you these basic things Necessi to be okay. able to fulfill his plan for your life okay. therefore seek his kingdom first and his righteousness so jesus is not saying all other things now this misinterpretation mm -hmm. has passed from pulpit to individuals from one generation to another mm -hmm. generation because of lack of hermeneutics okay so the average believer now thinks that once he's faithful in serving god god must give him everything that he needs in life and if, if God and, car, if, and if God is unable to do house. that, if God doesn't do that, yes, if God doesn't do that, the person becomes frustrated. And he thinks that God has disappointed him. Yes, because one, if the preacher man says that seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all other things, like I said, interpretation creates conviction. Yeah, it gives a person conviction that God is going to let me have everything that I want in life once I'm working with Him. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. So once the person feel that he is working with God and he's not getting that. Mm -hmm. He gets frustrated because yeah. one, a promise. Every promise creates expectation. Yeah. So if God is promising me that I should seek the kingdom of God and he will give me every other thing that I need in life, whether yeah. opportunity, whatever, and I'm not having it, then of course I feel disappointed. Exactly. Meanwhile, if the text, biblical principles, hermetic principles had been followed, mm -hmm. do you get it? There is no way the individual would have had, had that yeah, conviction. Exactly. This is why we keep telling people that, look, it is important for you to learn how to interpret the Bible. Exactly. If not, you misinterpret the Bible, mm -hmm. and the person who is listening to you will also believe, believe what, you are saying. what you are saying, because he himself doesn't know. Yeah. It is only when you are challenged, you get it. Yeah. People only get to realize that oh, oh jesus actually wasn't saying all other that things is, but yeah. all these things yeah when we start telling them that look there is uh there is uh a way of interpreting the bible yeah. look at it grammatically mm -hmm. and besides that observe the text mm -hmm. properly yeah open your eyes it's not saying all other things mm -hmm. it says these things and these things have meaning yeah and like we talked about the three mm. principles that are needed here. Context. We yeah. look at context when yeah. he was talking, talking about then. The grammar. The grammar. Yeah. So the grammar here, uh, see first, we look at the, uh, the, the, the piece, pronoun. The pronoun, yeah. Okay. Then it's left with uh, the literal. The, the literal. literal. Yeah. So you must take everything here. Normal. normal. Yeah, the normal that meaning. Is it. That, is it. that is the literal mm. aspect. So the normal meaning of food is food. Yeah. The normal meaning of what? Clothing is clothing. The yeah. normal meaning of water is water. You get it. So yeah. if a believer looks at his life, he can now understand that oh, oh God indeed has been faithful. Yeah. God has been feeding me even half more than one cloth. Yeah. God has been God has been providing me with what? With water. Yeah. Wow. God has been faithful to his word. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. But if the person doesn't understand the text this way, and the person thinks that what well, God needs to provide me how cows, car, car and, and everything. And the person will say, "Ah, ah, God has disappointed me." Yeah. This is why it is so important that we 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 learn biblical hermeneutics. Yeah. If you're a pastor, you need to learn how to interpret the Bible. Yeah. In fact, you have no excuse mm -hmm. to to uh, not to learn biblical hermeneutics so i think that uh uh we we have to also look at the role of the holy spirit, spirit yeah you know it's a question i even wanted to ask but yeah we'll, we'll the deal with that the yeah. yeah so the role of the holy spirit in, in hermeneutics how does yeah. the holy spirit guide us exactly in, in doing this mm -hmm. and yeah so, so that's what we'll be doing in yeah. our next video but i really enjoyed the the contest yeah, yeah, yeah because that is, that is you were able to, to look at what Jesus Christ spoke mm -hmm. before and after, before the that statement was made, all these things were made. Mm -hmm. And so the before one has really helped us to be, know the meaning of all these yes, these the things. Of yeah. All these things. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have to yeah. So, here. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, friends out there who are watching us. Uh keep watching and keep sharing uh uh, with
people that you think these videos might help. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.